Retro Rob plays everything. Hey Rob here and welcome to two weeks of the GPD Pocket. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about the Pocket. Fair warning on this video, there's not going to be gameplay footage. There's going to be footage actually from the machine itself, but it's not going to be gameplay footage. This isn't a let's play type of thing. Uh, I'm going to be doing plenty of those over the next couple weeks. Uh, this just isn't it. I'm going to talk about my experiences for the last two weeks. Uh, probably be about 10-15 minutes long. I'm going to try and keep it short, but I do want to show you some more things like some benchmarks and such from it and some of the things that I think you should probably do right away. Um, again, this is based on my experience, so your experience might vary. I know that there's uh, been a couple revisions on the GPD Pocket. Uh, I've got, I believe, the second one. Uh, mine's like the first batch after the Kickstart ones went out, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and I am kind of curious uh, what kind of experience you guys have had with it. If you've had it, and uh, just basically let me know in the comments below or uh, message me and you know I got about a million contacts. Anyway, all right, let's get started. Uh, number one, I, I'm gonna say right now that this is probably my favorite of the GPD devices. Uh, that said, man, I love the XD still, uh, but this is uh, an improvement over the GPD uh, win in so many ways. Uh, but it, just note, it's not really 100% a gaming device. You can use it as a gaming device, but that's not its that's not like its born purpose. That said, it, its guts and performance are very similar to the GPD Win, so don't expect a whole lot more out of it either as far as gaming performance, but do expect uh, more as far as just uh, general polish in the device. Okay, so that's it. Uh, here, you can just stop the video here. It's a more polished device in my opinion, but there are some things that are interesting about it and I think we're gonna go switch to the desktop now and talk about it. Um, number one is my experience with the BIOS. Uh, I, do in, I do recommend you update the BIOS. I generally don't recommend you update the BIOS, but I'm gonna show you some things that uh, basically uh, I think are gonna convince you to do that. Uh, number one uh, about the BIOS update, when you when you get this device, it's got a very locked down BIOS. There's not a lot of options in it. So one of the things I wanted to do is unlock the options and tweak it like I did the GPD Win. And so what you need to do is you basically need to download the new BIOS and run it in Windows. And I'm going to show you uh, that really quick. Uh, where I got it from is I did actually get it off of Reddit and I highly recommend uh, if you have any interest in the GPD Pocket, uh, go into Reddit and go to their GPD Pocket section. Uh, go to Pocket uh, Pocket Hardware Mods and just go to the general uh, GPD Pocket stuff and really just read through that and see what people are saying about it. It'll give you a really good feel for uh, whether this is a device for you. All right, so uh, what I was looking at actually is the unlocked BIOS version, and this is the BIOS I actually downloaded. I will give you a link right here to the Dropbox location. That said, if this fails, let me know and I will put it in my own Dropbox so that you can check it out. But anyway, here's the public Dropbox. Again, I'll put a link down below in the video if I uh, remember. No, I definitely will remember. But anyway, you're going to download this guy. Uh, it might give you a thing to sign in. You don't need to sign in. This is an actual Google Dropbox. I'm Google. <laughs> it is an actual Dropbox, so that's okay. Uh, download the zip file, it'll go into your downloads directory and it will, here we go, let's just, oop, this one didn't save, but anyway, it will save as a zip folder. Uh, so here, wait, let's just download it real quick while I'm talking to you. I'm going to direct download, do, 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 do. save it, it's not very big anyway. It'll run a security scan, uh, right click on it and extract all, it will make this folder right here. Uh, what you will want to do is, number one, <laughs> make sure that you have at least 20% power on your GPD pocket. Uh, mm, don't do that. Just just charge it up as high as you can. Get it up above the 90% line before you do this, for goodness sake. I know they recommend 20%, but that's just, uh, to me, that's just tempting fate. Uh, get yourself up to, uh, you know, up to full charge and do that before you actually run this program. Uh, number two, I, I left it plugged in. GPD, believe it or not, recommends that you don't. I've got like, 
I've got 20 some odd years in IT that has told me never to do uh, an update on battery. So I totally didn't follow those, in, those requests, uh, but you know, they say to do it with it unplugged. So just, just note that I didn't do it that way. Uh, what you wanna do is right click on update win, bat and run as administrator and it will run through it. Now, there are gonna be periods of time uh, where it will take a while and not respond. So you need to wait it out. What you absolutely do not wanna do is close that window or do anything until it says that the process is complete and passed. If it does not pass, run the process again before you ever reboot the machine. So make sure that you get a pass uh, before you reboot the machine. Once the process is done, uh, it'll probably just have an okay. In my case, the window closed out and nothing happened. So I rebooted and then it ran the actual flashing process. And once uh, it starts flashing, you want to keep flashing. So uh, again, <laughs> run program as administrator, fully charged. Make absolutely sure it finishes and passes. Then reboot the device and make sure that finishes <laughs> and completes and wait for it. Just keep waiting for it until it is done and then you should boot normally into Windows again. And once you've got that, uh, the BIOS will be unlocked and you can make some settings. Now, there is a guide here on how you can modify and change settings to supposedly get more performance. But I'm gonna tell you something. I did not see a performance increase. In fact, I saw a performance decrease and some other people have reported the same things. Uh, so I left it on tweet, but I wanna show you something before that. And I'm curious to see if anybody else had this happen. This uh, test was taken, and I'm gonna load this so you can see that I'm not being screwy or anything. This was on 8.5 before I updated the BIOS on this device. Do, 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 benchmark. I was actually filming this for a drag race between this and the GPD win. Uh, I'll be doing that video later. But uh, anyway, what I got was very unexpected, which was a very poor score uh, for this device. Even uh, I got 1752, uh, just to show that it's not a fluke. I hope I didn't load the same one twice. I'm sorry if I did. Um, wait, 1752. The other one should be different. So now I ran it again because you know sometimes you just get a fluke test. Okay, and I got 1776, and that's, that is what I got, and that kind of worried me, and I thought, man, I need to tweak this out, like I did the GPD win. Ooh, long-winded, aren't I? Uh, I'm going to load what happened. These are after I updated it, and I'm going to do before tweak and after tweak. Notice that, I'm sorry, the before tweak, I know the times are before. Uh, what I did is I, I ran the suggested tweaks first, and uh, then switch the BIOS back. I, re I reset it to defaults afterwards, so I got ahead of myself. Anyway, so here are the tests after the update, and this is with no modification at all uh, of the BIOS settings. Yeah, 2171, but then uh, after that, I got... Come on. 2279 and then I think I got some 23s after that yeah I might have lied about uh, whether it was any better I think it was just basically the same yeah there we go we got a 2300 score so uh, that was a significant increase and that was nothing changed uh, other than the fact that I updated the BIOS to the version that I showed you over there so that's that's a huge increase and I am curious, did anybody else see that? Is that just maybe there was something with my BIOS that was a little bit messed up? Uh, I didn't change any settings, but maybe there was something not quite right in it and that straightened it out, not sure. But I was I was actually seeing poor game performance too. All right, so, ooh, actually, yeah, 20, 2319, so I did do a little bit better after the tweaks. I'm lying, totally lying. So what happens when you do these things uh, basically in one recording streak. And don't edit out your mistakes. 21, yeah, see, there we go. Now I got 2166. 
and then I must have went with the average on this. Let's see. Doing it from memory. 23.15. Actually, I think it did do a little bit better after the tweaking, but anyway, uh, it, it's about the same. <laughs> Without, you know, the the post-tweaked version was very similar to the pre-tweaked version and didn't get me much. Uh, I had the exact same effect uh, when I ran throttle stop. I didn't get much out of it either, so this seems to be uh, basically the pinnacle that puts it right in the range of the uh, GPD win. So performance-wise, uh, at least on these tests, they're very similar, and I think that has panned out in games. I was expecting a little bit of an increase because of RAM, uh, but I think it's showing that the real throttling point here appears to be the, uh, the, the video processing capabilities of it itself, or the uh, graphics processor itself. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what I've learned about, uh, <laughs> about the BIOS update better performance after I got the update, uh, but not a huge increase, if any at all, after tweaking it out. Okay, let's talk a little bit about power modes. You will notice that by default, you only have one power mode available to you. That is power saver. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to unlock or use the other modes that are in it. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how well this actually works. I haven't noticed any huge gains. I thought I saw a small increase in performance uh, after running it, but I'm not 100% sure because it was well within uh, the variance. It just seemed like it went up a little bit. The average of the tests went up a little bit. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. I'm gonna give you a fair warning, of course, that power management is an important part of your system. You could damage things by doing this. I have not experienced any problems. Just know that you could. All right, so I'm gonna show you first, uh, here is the power management. There we go. Choose a power plan. And normally, you'll notice I've got two right now, uh, but normally you only have power saver mode here. At least I did when I got it. I'm gonna show you how to add the performance mode to it in this particular case. Uh, note that when you reboot, it may lose one or several power plans, but it won't lose the active power plan. So if you had power saver and balance, balance might disappear or it might not depending on the mood of Windows. I love Windows. Anyway, how do you do it? Well, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open up the command line. Oops, you're gonna open up the command line. Do, do, do command prompt. And uh, I don't think you need to run it as administrator. I do, but you may not need to do that. Uh, I've noticed it's changeable without it, but it's just how we do stuff like that. I don't know. No good excuse, honestly, because that really violates uh, how you should do security in general. Anyway, all right, let's control and copy. Uh, power config, and this is setting the active GUID for the performance mode you want. And we're going to do high performance in this case. Right click, uh, hit enter, and now I can... Let's just list the modes. Make sure it took, yes. All right, so you can see that high performance is now enabled. That's what that asterisk means. So now if I go into power, you'll see that high performance is a selected, is a selected mode. So there you go, it's now in high performance mode. Again, not 100% sure whether it actually works uh, based on testing slight increase in performance, uh, but maybe not at all. Uh, it could just be the luck of those three tests that I did. All right, let's let's uh, let's wrap things up a little bit. Uh, I don't really have a lot more to say about tweaking out the system, but I do have a lot to say about general construction and how I've been using the device. So uh, let's switch out. So what have I learned after two weeks with the GPD Pocket? Well, the first thing I've learned is that people seem to love this thing. I've never been asked in public about a device as much as this one. Even the GPD XD, which does, you know, cause a bit of a stir in gaming circles, uh, I found that the general public is very interested in this device. Uh, coworkers would come up and ask if it's some kind of new Apple device. My nieces and nephews I had 
uh, like the uh, family get together recently and they could not keep their hands off of it. They were constantly playing with it. In fact, they ran the battery dead after about four or five hours. Uh, they were playing games and stuff on it. So it it is a uh, definitely an, a device that gathers interest and almost everybody that is like a tech or anything else that is very surprised at the quality and they ask who built it right away they're like well who made this thing and it's like gpd and they never heard of them in most cases um they really do uh it really does have a very high quality feel now uh one of the things you might want to note about it is that uh it is what it is uh the screen of course was originally meant to be used vertically so if you ever have to reinstall the OS, you're going to have to address that by, uh, you know, setting up screen rotation and such. Uh, the other thing is that the BIOS, when you go in the BIOS, it's sideways. <laughs> so, so yeah, you might want to plug in a uh, USB keyboard uh, when you're doing uh, when you're doing BIOS work within it. Um, I did mention, of course, that I highly recommend updating the BIOS, which I generally do not recommend. Uh, be careful when you're doing it because, of course, it's always unsafe. Here, let's quit looking at me and start looking at the device a little bit here. Okay, so all in all, oh, there, there we go. Hopefully, it'll focus in a little bit better and give us better resolution. Yeah, there we go. Um, all in all, I would say that the quality in it, again, is very high across the board. Um, keep me in mind what it is. The keyboard, uh, I've never really adapted to playing games uh, first-person shooters with this. It does handle quite a number of first-person shooters pretty well. It runs pretty well with them as the GPD win did and the keyboards are natural for first-person shooters. Uh, however, I the, the layout of it is just not that comfortable for extended gaming sessions. That said, typing sessions it's fine for. It, it types really well. I really don't notice any problem and it, it's kind of weird that it bothers me so much when I'm using the WASD keys. Uh, I actually kind of use it at an angle like this to try and offset the angle that the keys are at. So anyway, just note that. Uh, another thing is that I do use a USB hub with it because I usually use it with a keyboard and a mouse, which kind of wrecks the portability. Uh, I end up keeping it in a bag instead of keeping it in my pocket. And by the way, it does fit in a pocket. I can absolutely pocketize this thing. Uh, but then again, I wear cargo pants a lot. So, you know, keep that in mind. It's kind of, it, it is a pretty big device and I have pretty big hands. Um, what else do I want to talk about with it? Uh, heat. I don't notice it getting very hot. Uh, I've heard other people complain about heat on it. Uh, I just see none of it. It might be because I've got a newer version of it. Uh, this is not a kickstart edition of it. This is, uh, I believe, the first production run after it. So it may have corrected some of the problems. Uh, as far as like Wi-Fi drops and stuff, I do notice an occasional, hey, it's got one right now. but. I do notice an occasional Wi-Fi drop on it. I think this is actually the second time it's Wi-Fi dropped on me. Uh, so you might want to keep that in mind. I hear there are some fixes for it on the Reddit page that I showed you earlier. Actually, I, mm, that's weird. Huh. Is it connected? Yeah, it says no internet. See, that's uh, one of the problems I've had with it. or I haven't had with it, but other people have seen. Anyway, uh, I find that turning it off and turning it back on again will correct it. At least it did the last time it did it to me. Uh, let's see, I mentioned keyboard, mouse. Uh, the other thing to note is that I have heard a complaint or two about uh, power coming out of the USB lines, uh, that it might not uh, have enough juice for uh, things like uh, large physical hard drives or things like that. So if you have things like that that you gotta hook up regularly, you might want to get a powered USB hub to handle it. Uh, as far as anything else, the charger is actually pretty bog standard. Uh, I've tested it with a Dell charger, a Dell USB uh, C charger, and it seemed to work fine and it seemed to address the dock fine. So I think that's probably okay. You can probably use a third party charger with it. That said, it's highly recommended that you don't, but I it seems to work okay. Um, gameplay, as I said, it's it's nearly identical to the GPD win in performance. So if you've had a GPD win, um, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. You're not going to see a huge kick in performance, even though I thought the RAM would. Finally, uh, how do I feel about it? Is this my uh, main machine? Well, I, I think I did mention this a little bit. Uh, 
it's probably my favorite uh, wind based one. I certainly like it better than the GPD wind. I think it's better constructed. I think it's better thought out. It's not a 100% perfect device by any means, but I do think a lot of thought was put into it and it is pretty darn classy. So uh, generally I give it a thumbs up. It's around a $500 device. It probably is worth that given the construction quality on the outside. Um, it's fine for basic users. I don't think you need to be any kind of computer specialist to buy this like I would have suggested for the GPD uh, win. Uh, so it's pretty safe to use for general use. All right, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do me a favor, give me that big old thumbs up, subscribe for more. Uh, I am definitely going to be showing gaming videos on this over the next couple weeks. Uh, I've already started them, so hang in there for those. If you have any comments or any performance boosters that you know about, please tell me about them in the uh, in the description. Actually, I'm sorry, in the uh, comments down below, and uh, maybe I'll do a video on them or do an update to this video. In fact, I almost certainly will do a one month video. All right, thanks for watching. Bye. Retro Rocks Gaming Videos